I wish there was a show that I could watch at home, and it would have lots of friends and also be very good. And I haven't really written the words to this song, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I've not got a plan. Much like the show, but the show is going to be really good. It is dum 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 dum. Oh yeah, it's the Friday night quarantine show, and you watch it on your laptop or your phone. There's Luke, and he is really cool. So is Josie. She is also really cool. Don't forget the guests, Paddy. There's loads of guests. Why, thank you, Mr. Dog. I love all the guests. You can watch it on the Cosmic Shambles Network every single week. And we don't get any money from it. Please, please put money into the tip jar or else we're going to have to accept that our industry is doomed. Thank you to everyone watching at home on the Friday Night Quarantine Show podcast. I'm so pleased you're all here. Yeah. Do you think that was good? Yes, I do. Okay, great. the friday night quarantine show um after three weeks away this is episode n of our long-running series i'm josie long and this is my co-host i'm john luke roberts good uh how are you john luke oh i'm very grumpy i've had a terrible time i bought listen i bought a puppet of a little um Um, hen (laughs) and i was using it to make a point about the universe but then the little Hen reminded me too much of a dream I had about Andrew Lloyd Webber. And so when I went to do the uh, improvisation, I ended up throwing the little hen out of the window. Lovely, John Luke. Thank you for that. I, uh... How are you, Josie? <laughs> oh, I'm fine. I come from Brompton, Bromsgrove, Billy Old, Billy Old Ricky, Billy Old... Orpington. Orpington in Kent. Oh, I come from Orpington. I'm very angry about things, but equally hopeful and positive as well. I have a Mrs. Baby, and I've got a Johnny as well, but Johnny's nowhere near. Oh, Johnny, what's she doing? I think he's gone off to do something. Oh, what a lovely day. And sometimes I want to eat my niece. Um, well, you said that in your show, like um, Cara Josephine. There was a whole bit I about did not. I said in my show that all I wanted to, to do, do was crawl into a giant pair of trousers and pretend to be a dinosaur. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm dropping it, but I thought, I thought, I thought it was very good, Josie. It was um, very good, and it was, very, it was very flattering, I thought. Yeah, you've really caught the essence of <laughs> my um, wasted... That's dis- <laughs> <laughs> My daughter made me a castle. <laughs> um, Josie, there are rules about YouTube. We may not now be able to put this up online. <laughs> she made me a castle from her Peppa Pig building blocks. Um, it's very, uh, well, um, priapic. Redolent of a lighthouse, yes. Yes, redolent of a, yes. Uh, oh. Or a naked person with very big shoes, blue shoes. Oh, hello. Um, good. Bless you. And the theme tune this, bless you again, the theme tune this week was provided, as usual, by our house band, Johnny and the Baptist. Johnny is currently putting a baby to bed. Yes, a two-year-old. Mm-hmm. Uh, out. <laughs> well, you've got to help out, haven't you? As long as he's being paid, that's <laughs> but you can't look after anyone else's baby if you're not. Bless you. And please welcome to the screen, Paddy Jervis. Hey, hey, I, I'm the leader this I'm week. The leader this week. <laughs> I got rid of him. I'm already three out of the four words of the band name, and now if I go rid Johnny, don't need him no more. <laughs> what are you, are you planning, how are you planning to um, make the most of your Johnny pre 
expression. Um, well, I've I've started up a new uh, double act with um with, with well I've I've got a little friend with me over here. Oh, hello, it's me, James Acaster, and I'm here with Paddy doing That's some a good impression. Good. Oh, can you still see me? Oh, but, yeah. Oh. That's a good impression. It was a good I, impression. Yeah. I, I, I will say my pet peeve is people doing impressions of other comedians. Oh. Do you I'm wish sorry. to antagonise me further? But hang on, didn't we open the show with impressions of other comedians? Yes, and I'm furious! <laughs> and I'm angry! <laughs> right? oh, that's so good! Um, can you do any other impressions, Paddy? Um, who, uh, get, yeah, hit me, hit me. Go on. I can do, me. go on. I can do, I can do quite a good out here shot. Um, yeah, I've, I've got out here down. I've got him down. I'm doing better with him now. Um, <laughs> good impressions! <Yeah. laughs> I'm working on it. Don't worry. I'll, I'll bring a couple. I'll bring some friends with me every week. Don't worry. <laughs> and I'll just try all you UK comedians. Yeah, 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 yeah. They'll always be them. Do quite, quite a good impression of, quite... of the Eighth Doctor. Oh yeah, hit me. Um, I'm a doctor, but probably not the one you were expecting. Uh... It's, it's not bad, but it's too niche. It's too niche. I've never never seen it. So where he, he really just turned up again for ten minutes. It was very good. He should have been in. It should have been bloody McGann in the bloody day of the Doctor. I tell you that for nothing. Play something for free. McGann was, was good. He was bloody good. Bloody good. Should have seen more of him. Yes, please. Um, we have, who have we got coming up? Um, we've got Angela Barnes. Angela Barnes. Yeah. Robin Ince. Yeah. Robin Ince. Oh, Jeffrey Chaucer. Oh. Josie Long will hopefully be doing a bit. Um, who knows? Uh, Johnny will return at some point, probably. That's yes. nice, isn't it? Yes. And um, then we'll say bye bye. So that's an exciting. Um, God, it's so hard at the moment. That's it's an so exciting hard as well. I'm just. I don't want to talk. I've just spent all week furious about various different things, and it's not. It's not gone at all. Um, well, what's funny is. Good it... guess. <laughs> Uh, I feel like everyone's spent the week being traumatised by wider events. And so everyone's just kind of, uh, sort of, I feel now like very desperate to cling on to you guys, put my hand through the screen and just cling on to you and hope, hope it'll all be all right. I felt, so, I, I really felt like I'd adjusted to this. And, and then suddenly, suddenly, I think there was like this cork was just let, let out and I went, oh, how dare! Uh, so there we are. Yeah. I've had a box of Lego, and I've yeah, like it turned up. It's a Lego treehouse, and I've not touched it. Something must be wrong. Well, that's very sad. Yeah, thank you. Um, but there, well, look, we should um, keep things on a happier note. It is a comedy show. There's Mr. Penis, the Naked Man. Yeah, wanger. <laughs> I just did it to make Paddy laugh. <laughs> it really got me. <laughs> oh, that. This is why I want to do friend. some real end of the pier. <laughs> It's oh. not behind me, is it? Yeah. Oh, the end's come off. <laughs> Two Ronnie's thing. Oh, the end's come off. Oh, no, you want to see Matron about that. Because they have really strong gags all the way through. And then the punchline would always be a bit, what? And then it would kind of cut off. I bet it's because they would do a day's writing and then it would get to 5.15 and they'd go, well, that's the end of the day. Fuck it. Uh Oh, that's what my wife said. All right, done. Get out. <laughs> that's what. Although, well, to be fair, Josie, that's what my wife said. Is funny in any circumstances. That's what my wife said. Exactly. Yeah. Lovely, um, lovely bit of business. Look. That's what my wife said. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> lovely bit of business. Um, is I don't have a uh, my wife left left. Paddy, do you have a song you'd like to do? Or is this not something you can do without Johnny, the brains and guitar player of the operation? Um, Paddy's the guitar player. Yeah, player. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's that's very much part of my role. Um, yeah, oh, sure. oh, Paddy, Paddy, can you do a song that Johnny would normally sing? Then you can do both bits, and they won't be out of sync. Um, oh, okay, uh, yeah, sure, okay. Um, we'll do something really short so that we can, yeah, all right. So, yeah, 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 fine. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 fine. Yeah, 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 I can do it. Yeah, sure, why not? Yeah. Mm. Can you hear that? Yes. Do you want me to join in after a couple of seconds? I mean, it's only a couple of seconds long, so actually I'd love that, because then we might get a second verse. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
You're never really on holiday when you're in Kent. A song written to be cruel to me yeah. and my heritage. Thanks, Jose. You're always <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Um, I, I, I was about to say I've really missed doing this with you guys. I'm not about to say I haven't, but <laughs> we, on, the, on the weeks we haven't done it, we've done quiz. We did oh, yeah. quiz just us, and it was really nice. I can do some of the quiz questions for the viewers at home in the absence of having yeah, any That would be delicious. <laughs> they were very good questions. Yeah. There's a quiz? When, I, when we were doing the quiz, I kept on suddenly getting anxious and thinking, like, they must be watching. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You say something and they yeah, go. It's Patreon oh, only. This quiz. <laughs> um, well, should we bring on our first act? Oh, I would love it. Oh, I'd love. It. What a treat! What an absolute treat! Um, all the way from Brighton. Please put your hands together or do a clap emoji on your social media outlet of choice, and welcome to your screens, Angela Barr. Hello. How are you? I'd like to just start by saying I too am from Kent, um, born and bred. And while I'd like to be able to stand up for it, I can't because it's irredeemable. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're sort of related by marriage, aren't we? We are. My half brother is married to your stepsister, step-sister. right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that right. makes us sis. We'll have that. Yeah. I know. It's Kent, mate. It's Basically yeah. Norfolk, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right, I shall leave you to it. Thanks, You're guys. Right, Bye. Bit... Hello. Well, this is the new normal, isn't it? It's very strange just sort of talking to myself on Skype. But I'm, look, between you and me, I'm really enjoying a lockdown. It turns out I was born to hunker down. Like, this is this is what I live to do. It's completely got rid of my FOMO, which, to be honest, was clinical, um because it go, fear of missing out doesn't happen when you know exactly where everyone else is it's perfect and i know there's lots of people dying by the way that's a caveat i know that's bad and i know our government is a utter shit show but i am having the best time i got engaged which is quite exciting i um i'll show you all my there's my ring i have a concrete engagement ring which is pretty fucking cool um it's made of concrete because i i love concrete um, I'm not a communist, but I like the look. That's my. Um, so I am marrying my fella Matt. We've been together for six years, um, and he's realised he's probably not going to do any better now. So might as well. And because um, he's proper good looking, my fella, like out of my league, good looking. So I'm happy to have snared him. And I know he's good looking because every time I've introduced him to a friend for the first time, the minute he leaves the room, they'll turn to me and go, "How the fuck did you do that?" um charming isn't it you know and so what do his friends say to him it's like you're all right but anyway I am in a good place I am in a good that's what I keep telling myself take no notice of the fact that I've written send help on the blackboard behind me that I've just remembered is still there it's all fine um I've been set a little challenge which I'm going to use you guys as guinea pigs for now I have spoken quite openly before and got quite a lot of shit because I'm not a fan of of poetry right I, I'm 43 and I just feel like I will never be able to tell if a poem is good or not right and I don't in my heart of heart believe that anyone really can I just I can't shake the feeling that poetry is a medium for people who have never been told their shit at anything you know and I'm not I'm not talking about the funny ones because I like a bit of Pam Ayres. that's fine I'm talking about that earnest shit they read at funerals you know, if I have to go to one more funeral and I hear now, we're going to read Mike's favourite poem. I was like, Mike's what? Like, you do know we all knew Mike. You know, Mike thought a Tennyson was a vacuum cleaner. What the fuck are you doing? And I, I will, I will admit, I'm bitter because I dated a poet once. I mean, I say a poet. He worked for Lambeth Council, but he called himself a poet. And this guy, he used to just sit in a room and read poetry to me. Like no one else was there. Now. What the fuck are you supposed to do with your face while that's happening? I swear to God, I only ever slept with him to stop him talking. That was it. But as we're in a lockdown situation, my friend, she uh, sent me a challenge to write some poetry because she hates me, really. And um, so I've done it. I've done it. I've said, right, fuck you. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to read. You'll be pleased to know I've chosen haiku as my uh, format of choice because they are blessingly short um so i've written some haiku so i thought i'd share them with you look i've even got a notebook and written haiku on the front um 
So I'm, you know, I'm taking this really, really seriously. Um, so I've got a couple for you. We'll just see. Some of them might take some explaining, um, and I'll explain them. And um, then once it's done, we can agree to forget about it and never talk about it again. All right? That's the deal. Okay? Okay. Uh, here's the first one. The first one is a comment on what I've been doing a lot of in uh, lockdown, if I'm honest. So here we go. <clears throat> I watch true crime shows, not for fun, but so I know what to look for. Oh, see, I fucked it. It's what to look out for, isn't it? That was four. So see, I fucked it already. One IQ in. Done. See if I can get any better. Okay, this one is my comment on climate change. Here we go. <clears throat> I try to be green so I don't use plastic straws because I'm not five. There we go. That's climate change sorted. Um, this is one about ageing. I quite like. Uh, like I said, I'm 43. I know I don't look at you. You're absolutely right. Um, this is... I'm old enough to remember when a pop-up was just a market. Remember that some of you don't know what I mean by that, but a market, a pop-up used to be where you go to buy knockoff trainers, right? Not artisan bread. That's the truth of it. Okay, um, this one, oh, this one a bit dodgy. I don't know. This might get us knocked off YouTube, but fuck it, I'll do it. Um, he kissed her and she fell asleep for a century. Bill Cosby's defence. There we go. Um, that's that one. We'll move on quickly from that before anyone makes any comment on it. Um, all right, then. This is this is one I like. I live in this box. Been here since 96. So I've won hide and seek. Yeah, no. OK. Uh, this is my final one. This is my favourite one. Um, if you don't like it, I don't care. Here we go. My dog has three legs. She also has a fourth one. So no big deal. There you go. I've done it. I think I've fulfilled my obligation to write some poetry. Isn't it mad that I'm currently sat? I mean, I'm not convinced that this isn't just a cheese dream. I'm sat in my study, which, by the way, is the hottest room on earth right now. So if I'm sweating, I apologise. And um, uh, yeah, I've got a study. So what? Doing all right, you know. Uh, I haven't got a garden. So, you know, swings and roundabouts, isn't it? And I'm sitting in my study and I am reading poems to a computer screen. Now, if somebody had told me, Six months ago, that that's how I'd be spending a Friday night. I would have thought they were on crack. That's the truth of it. Yet here we are. And isn't it mad that I can sit in my little room in Brighton and talk to you all because of this technology? Now I'm gonna. I'm standing like a nana now. I know that, but I will remind you again in my forties. And um, yeah, I I've, I've chosen to embrace this technology. A lot of people are scared of it, but I've gone. This is brilliant that we can do this, right? Because if this had happened in the eighties, oh my god, it would have been a horror show. Because right, trust me, the 80s, you don't know boredom unless you were born and you were young in the 80s. Right? People don't know. My friend's little boy said the other day he gets bored waiting for an app to load. Now, fuck off. That is not boredom. I'm talking Sunday afternoon in the 80s when it's raining. You've read every book in the house. I grew up in Maidstone. That's a Mills and Boone and an Argos catalogue. Right? Your mum's watching something black and white on the only telly in the house. So you listen to your Walkman for a bit, but the batteries are dying. So Madonna's like a virgin. Sounds like Barry White singing it. Right? And you can't go and buy more batteries, can you? You can't because all the shops are shut. And I mean... All the shops are shut. Even the petrol stations are shut. And then when you think your day can't get any more tedious, your dad would go, get in the car, everyone. We're going to go and visit someone. That's what we do on a Sunday afternoon in the 80s. We would visit people for no reason other than to ruin their day. That's it. Do you know what? We never told them we were coming. Could you imagine doing that? So they'd be livid. We, we used to spend every Sunday with people wishing that they'd ho hoovered and we'd fuck off. That's the truth of it. Is it the only people who phoned ahead in the 1980s were the IRA? Fact. That's it. So I've decided to embrace the technology. I'm not scared of it. I have been scared of it. I bought a new tumble dryer recently because, like I say, things going pretty well. Got a good ecology rating. Don't give me shit on Twitter. And I bought it and I got it home. And for some reason that I cannot fathom, my tumble dryer is Wi-Fi enabled. Why would I ever, until they can bring the robot that loads the fucking thing, I can't see why I would ever need, and it's just made me paranoid. I was like, well, maybe the Russians are hacking into it, and I'm pretty sure they are, because the other day I took all my washing out, all the little socks, inside one big one. So, you know, but I've decided to embrace technology. That's what I'm going to do. I, I'm not scared of it anymore. This lockdown has made me learn that it's there to help us. It is our friend. I'm not scared of robots. Don't be scared of robots. What do you think? Oh, the robots are coming. They're going to take over. Don't panic. They haven't even worked out how to tick a box that says I am not a robot. It's fine. So I'm going to embrace it. This has been a lot of fun. If a bit weird, I think I'm having a breakdown. Send help. Uh, enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you very much. I've been Angela Mars. Cheers. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
<laughs> yeah, they can't even. Yeah, they can't even check which uh, were um, zebra crossing lights. Yeah. yeah, they'd be scared of them. They're our friends. <laughs> be scared of them. That's what I'll leave you with. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you for having me. And uh, it was soundtracked by the uh, horrific screams of my daughter. And I texted Johnny to find out what had happened. And he said she'd headbutted him. Uh, so they're both in. Uh, <laughs> I think what's going to happen throughout the course of this show, it's just going to be missives from Johnny saying, like, she's <laughs> she's bitten the side of the cot off. <laughs> in, in the headbutting competition, I, I don't like Mrs. Baby's chances. No. Mm. And so this morning she headbutted me on the tooth. Can you imagine how much that smarts her on the tooth? This is a very, this is a very roundabout way, Joseph. You admitting to biting your child. <laughs> um, she headbutted me, by which I mean she was there, and I walked over and butted my head. And if that's bad parenting, well, I'm sorry then. I don't know anything about <laughs> parenting. Um, <laughs> right, I'm going to have to go and get our next guest. Okay, well, okay, in between, well, I, between right. us, I'll fill with my stand up set. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome to this. Wait, I thought I'd give you an introduction. Should I? No, please. Wow! It's Josie Long! That's good. <laughs> Hello, I'm Josie Long from the early 2010s. I'm here. Um, uh, yes, we, yes, you can, Luke. Luke sent a message. Um, I've got. I thought I'd do. Uh, uh, we have been doing a quiz the past few weeks, and one of the rounds was called "Out and About with Josie Long," and it was a bit of fun. And I thought I would do it for people watching at home. I don't really. Know, you won't be. Able, you, you're just gonna have to mark yourselves. Um, but hopefully that'll be good. Um, <laughs> Paddy's now got a background of. Ainsley Harriet just looking over a little hill. Why have you got that? And now you're muted. I'm sorry, oh. I don't know what I did. That was fine. Thanks for upstaging me there. <laughs> um, yeah, it, other news this week in toys. Uh, my daughter is uh, absolutely obsessed with her Peppa Pig figurines, and we took them out uh, to the river where we live, to buy the river where we live. And she. Um, she dropped Pepper into the water by the swans. It was quite a traumatic thing for her. We had to convince her that Pepper had chosen to go and live with the swans in the water and that she was very happy. Uh, truth, Pepper sunk to the bottom. She's having a horrendous time. Um, but then she promptly lost Mummy Pig and George Pig, leaving only Daddy Pig. Um, absolutely shocking event. So what did we do? We just ordered a new set of Peppa Pig family figurines. Fuck it. That's the least damage we can do. Repair the situation as quickly as possible. So that was fine. She liked the new one. She kept sort of looking at the daddy pig and going, that's old daddy. Partly because as we remember, he's he's lost one of his arms and she's, you know, she's very rude to him because of it. Oh, that's old daddy. It's just my fault because the houses are so untidy. And she'll go, mm, toast on the floor. And I have to say, no, no, that's old toast. We won't eat that. That's from three days ago. But um, I say house of flat. But so for a while, she put two daddy pigs and one, one normal, normal, oh God, God. internalized uh, structural bias. One perfectly, uh, perfectly representing the television show family. Um, but then we found the other George and the other money. So we just have... No, and we lost the other daddy, sorry. So we basically have one daddy pig and two families. And I'm just having to tell her that's fine. And then I said it on Twitter and four different people were like, that's pig of me. And I was like, I'm supposed to be a fucking comedian. That was a joke. Just sat there. It was money on the table, and I didn't even look at it. Um, yeah. So that's that's this. So she received a number of new toys. 
settled in yet. Um, there's a farmer. I can't remember which. Oh, forget it. Okay. Now to finish my set, <laughs> we're going to do some of the quiz out and about with Josie Long. One, I hope you're ready. Yesterday, I, not yesterday, I saw two smashed plates covered in writing. What were they? Were they Prince Harry and Meghan's wedding china? Were they B, a ritual done by two teenage girls? I can hear my daughter crying. What a joy. C, someone's calligraphy art. Or D, plates that said pasta, pasta, pasta. Question two. In this pandemic, have I sprained my ankle? Question three. How many times in this pandemic have I had a public spat with a cyclist, not literally spitting more a fight, fight, a to-do? Question four. Is the guy in number 83 just smoking weed the whole time? Who is such a lovely man, is often out watering his lawn of an evening. What's his tipple of choice? Number six. What is my opinion of TikTok? Number seven, what is my opinion of Keir Starmer? Number eight, what's my opinion of... Number nine, what is, in my opinion, the best new show on TV, easily as good as The Sopranos? And the last question I'm going to give you is, how long does the 2020 cricket match last? Okay. If you're... The answers are... It was in... Lads and piece them back together, but then I smashed them out again because I thought I didn't want to ruin the mad. Question three, twice. Question four, yes. Question five, gin and tonic. Question six, shit vine. Question seven, <laughs> good luck with that, guys. <laughs> Question eight, haven't seen it yet. Question nine, succession. And the final question was a trick question. There aren't any cricket matches in 2020. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. Now, I'd like to ask a poet from the 15th century. Uh, sorry, I didn't agree, but I didn't concentrate. It's Geoffrey Chaucer. Hilao, 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 he am media, he am media, he will put Geoffrey Chaucer. He na media, he will put, he na a put, he am a put. Yeah, li uh, a put is licorita, but moo, e grim. At end of every lean, e grim. Oh, how he lick to rim. Lick, 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 rim, rim, rim. Jiffery tells the medieval put, it is lovely to sow ye. Uh, he lie, he lie, uh, oh. potty. He lie, he lie. Yam, he lie. I am uh, Jeffrey Chaucer. I am so sorry. Uh, I don't need me clothes. I he had he had me clothes. Stalin a woo. Would you believe what? Stalin a woo. Me clothes. Stalin a woo. He was he have dressed up in a hodge, in a hodge, like a bosch. You know a hodge, like a bosch, like a uh, like a tray, but short. You know oh um or perhaps a full size tray, but the trunk. As in the grand, but he he had he went for a splash 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 in modern English splash splash splash, and um, he, he took off me clothes and found in the mock be the hodge, and um, he, he was starring a woo, be a be a gabbling, you know a gabbling, you know like a fiery, like a uh, like a like a, a spear, no, no a, a, a fiery, a um a, an olf, a poxy, you know oh yeah like a, like a, a, like a, know, a spirit like, like a, like a, like a like fairy, like a Danny Devoto, you know. With wangs, a Danny Devoto with wangs. Yes, yes, a gabbling. He had um, Stalin a woo, and he had got to dress up as a hodge. And then, as if me do could not get any worse, he was corset be a wristwatch. You know, wristwatch? Like a clock. Hey, a wristwatch, you know, lick a, uh, uh, lick a watch. <laughs> a like watch. A, no, no, like a, like a wristwatch. You know, a wristwatch. You know, a watch. <laughs> You know, and she caused me to sloop for hundreds and hundreds of yarders, and he have a whack and new in the mad and do. Yes. Can I ask when, when, what, what, what century were you in? Hundreds of yarders ago. E, e, 
He's <laughs> a lang team of goo. He done it when he was a leave. We manly just called it new. But <laughs> no, it is not new, new. Who it are is... you? I am Jeffrey Chaucer, medieval poot. Jeffrey, yeah, Jeffrey Chaucer, the wife of Bath. Okay. Yeah, correct. And I am the second greatest poot in the world. Second Who's the greatest? That's a poo. I don't have like a degree or anything, so like I'm not I'm not hundred percent clear on Thus that mark as ye thunk that motters. Um he have some advice because he have discovered you have a doddly a doddly plug. You know? You currently have a doddly plug. A sick oh, plug. Oh plug we do, yes, a doddly plug everywhere. You know, a plug, a doddly plug. He have advice. For surviving in a doddly plug. Okay. Own. Advose own. Don't knit. French cos vermin. You know? The like a rot. Yes. Yes, yes. Do knit. French cos. French cos, you know? Lick, uh, lick cossing, but with tangs. You know? French kissing. I'm with it. Yes, yes, you know, you know, French cos. Also, um, wash your hands at loose. Two teams a yard. Yes. Also, poo mini to the church. Always poo mini to the church. Poo and prue. They into the church, poo and prue. You know? Poo, money, and Pay prue. and pray. Oh, Leave. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Don't it so brew. you're saying that we should um, make, make sure, sure that we really, really stay in touch with the church at this time? Oh, yes, yes. Money for salvation, and also, um, when you go out the house, yeah, hold your breath, hold your breath the whole time, all oh, the team, yes. And is that how is that how you survived a doddly plog? Nay, he survived the doddly plog for he was corsed be a wristwatch and sought to the future. And now he have a doddly plog gone. <laughs> Own final poos. Of advice. Yes. If ye yourself have the plug, yes, yes, yes. spond your team, spond your team, team, spend your time, uh, yes, okay. yes. Um, with cats. Ye have been Jeffrey Chaucer and ye will go away. I am so sorry about me clothes. Farewell, farewell. <laughs> Awesome. I didn't even have any time to interview him about the, can the Canterbury Tales. Yeah, and they sure are some tales, Jose. <laughs> Boy, how do I know? <laughs> You're a big fan. I'm a I'm a big fan. You know, all they talk do, all about him is big. Troilus and Crusade. Yeah, Just, sure. I Died I in fourteen hundred. Googled that whilst that was going on. <laughs> God, he's that, God, he's that old. Oh, I feel embarrassed. I thought he was a whole full century after that. Well, there you go. I mean, some of us really know our Jeffrey, and uh, <laughs> I think it's clear which of us it is today. It's quite fun to think that because my dad's called Jeffrey, and I don't see it as like a thousand-year-old name. But there it is. Yeah, there you go. It's oh, oh, oh Luke's, Luke's back, back and, and, uh, and, and and he's, he's got. got he's it's got not hat. Luke. It's the woman out of Midsummer. Oh, it's. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I missed that. I was oh, Luke, as a former scholar of Middle English poetry, you would have loved it. I would have loved it. Direct line. Oh, oh. God, real. it was wasted on me. I should have really gone and done the task whilst you stayed, if anything. That would have been tricky to arrange, I think. Now, um, we. Ooh, we oh, we got exact getting lined up through oh. the technical pieces. Hang on, I'm just going to see. Johnny might swap places with me. I'm just going to see how it's going. Well, Robin, I'm sure this is the build-up that you always like. <laughs> Fair arrangements. Robin just... and I recorded a show this morning, so I'm like, well, we've already hung out. Yeah. Here it comes. <laughs> Where is he? What? I don't know. What, are we introducing Robin? I think we are. Day? Please welcome to your screens. It's Vince. Yay! What a great Get out! Get out! Oh! 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 
I was not expecting this at all. I'm trying to use my resistance band. Hold on. What do you want from me? I'm zooming and skyping now. I don't want to see you. What am I meant to be saying? Right. Anyway, <laughs> that, I was not as ready for a piece of physical comedy that I just worked out about 30 seconds ago. Uh, anyway, involved with resistance back. It was going to be nonsense. It was nonsense, but it was more nonsense than I intended it to be. Anyway, hello. Uh, very nice to be here at the Quarantine Comedy Club. Uh, I, uh, I This is a very difficult thing to do because um, normally at gigs, I kind of like wander off. Uh, you know, a couple of hours beforehand, get my mind together. Uh, I don't have a large risotto about 15 minutes beforehand. I've had quite a large um, risotto and some broccoli and a, a small lollipop. So energy wise, this is very much not uh, the way that I would normally be uh, performing. Um, so what I thought I would tell you about is, uh, for, well, the first, what, what I like, by the way, is that, that Josie's Quarantine Comedy Club is very similar to all the other gigs that I've done with her, which is just when you think, oh, I probably won't be introduced for a while, suddenly it is your go, and you're very much uh, not prepared for it. So what I was going to tell you about was um, what I thought is my favourite thing, because I've not really, I've not written any of the, you know, lockdown based material so i thought what i would talk about instead is the television pro actually and i'll tell you another thing by the way uh my family we've just been playing online a friday night dinner quiz from a professional quiz company do not do that 530 families and teams all professional quizzes very joyless very unhappy people 530 teams anyway we're doing all right we're about 312th in the friday night dinner quiz so uh at the stands of professional quizzes not bad at all um i i want to talk about my my very favorite um tv shows friday night dinner is quite high up um but it was it was a point of middle age because it's something josie and i've talked about before actually which is there are certain ages where we can get very kind of cliched about, oh, yeah, you know, in the way that, oh, aren't all young people, snowflakes. No, 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 they're not. And, uh, and the same way with old people as well, but it's something that Josie knows about is, is my dad, who's 90 years old now. And uh, at 88 years old, uh, my dad rang me up and he said, Robin, I've been reading the Daily Telegraph now for 50 years. And you know what? I've realized it's rubbish. It's absolute rubbish. I can't I can't read it anymore. I was thinking of getting a subscription to The Guardian. What do you think? So 88 years old, my dad has become a regular Guardian reader uh, every single day. Uh, every day is uh, is another revelation. The very first Monday that he got The Guardian, there was a lovely on, on the front page of G2 was a great big picture of uh, it was Hannah Gadsby, huge interview with Hannah Gadsby just after a show went to netflix i think and my dad just rang me up and and, and he was going robin I'm, I'm, i've been reading about hannah gadsby do you know hannah gadsby i said well i know her a bit yeah because she sounds very interesting i said well she is very interesting said, yes because she's from tasmania and she's a lesbian and she talks a lot about what it's like to be from tasmania as a lesbian and as a woman as well and what it's like to travel the world as a lesbian and a woman and a tasmanian woman and he just kind of and he was so like interested and eventually i thought i better warn my dad and i said dad just so you know even though it is The Guardian, it won't always be jam-packed with tip-top lesbian news. And he said, I don't mind at all. I found the whole thing very interesting. And what I love, again, is the fact that we're meant to presume that at certain different ages, we're different cliches. And in fact, at 88 years old, his politics changed. And, and it's, it was, a, or, or to, to my eyes, it did. Maybe they were the same and he just had the wrong newspaper. Though the worst thing that's happened in terms of, um, I, I was thinking a while ago uh, that I've, I've now... My son's 12 years old, and there will, I think, start to be more embarrassing moments watching television, and there's more kind of... Like, I mean, I, I find it very hard. His punk, for any music that my uh, mum and dad didn't understand that I liked, you know, whether it was things like the specials or whether it was New Wave or punk or whatever, his equivalent, I suppose, rebellion is men who appear to be nearly as old as me with YouTube channels, with millions and millions of subscribers who merely scream while playing Fortnite. And that, that is my moment of going, yeah, I suppose that's, that's what it must have been like when people, it, it seems to have a very different agenda and, and manifesto to it. But the worst moment in terms of that divide between young uh, and old was my, uh, one of my nieces who is, uh, is 30 years old. Um, 
any embarrassment you can think about when you were growing up, those, those the typical moment would be the moment of seeing a you know a sex scene on television with your parents. With, with me, very typically because I'm very well brought up, it was obviously Ken Russell's adaptation of uh, Women in Love, and uh, where I was allowed to stay up late because it was a classic, and then have to just sit there going, "Oh my God, Glenda Jackson's not wearing very much now. Alan Bates, not a, oh dear, are you enjoying it, Robin? I don't know. I'm very confused. This is a much worse one for my niece." Uh, my niece uh, went round to uh, my dad's house. They were just sitting there watching TV. And uh, they ended up, uh, my third year old niece and my ninth year old dad, watching Channel 4's Naked Attraction together. It was an accident. It was basically my dad was channel hopping. He was on his way to find whatever Channel Foils War was on that night. And somewhere on that journey, he just stopped and went, what on earth is this, Francesca? What's going on? There's just people in a tube, naked. What's it's going? It's called Naked Attraction, uh, Granddad. It's very odd, isn't it? Why have none of them got pubic hair? Is there a disease going around? But anyway, so it was a very, very embarrassing and, and, and horrifying moment. Um, but the one that I really wanted to mention in terms of my favourite television, television that I adore, um, there's two, and it happens at middle age, I've found, because I think at middle age I no longer want to, I don't want to watch too much violence, I want to see love as much as possible. I want to see happiness and hope. So my two favourite things to watch on television are any celebrity-based narrowboat shows and 24 Hours in a &E. That's it. Th those are, and no one else in the house can understand my addiction to both of those. I think the celebrity narrowboat thing, especially when it's Timothy West and Prunella Scales, because there is a there's kind of an age that again it's it's it, it's that age where the idea of watching two elderly Shakespearean actors moving at approximately three miles an hour through the Midlands for me is an utter delight. And it, and it is just if you've not seen it, it's just Timothy West there just steering just. Tim, didn't we do Merchant of Venice in Telford? Yes, we did, Prue. Yes, we did. That's it. It's beautiful. It's everything you want. If you want a faster-paced one, by the way, there is one uh, with John Sargent. It used to be on ITV. It's not the full hour of Narrowboat action. Uh, it's just it's about 24 minutes. Uh, so really pacey, really fast, narrowboat, a lot of kind of, yeah. Well, I mean, also there's jeopardy. There's a lot more jeopardy. I think with, with, with Tim and Prue, it's a very kind of yeah, elegiac perambulation through the countryside. With John Sargent, amongst other things, there is very often a lot of hat-based jeopardy. Uh, quite often, John Sargent, full well knowing that it's a blustery day and that he's going across an aqueduct somewhere near Stoke-on-Trent, still buys himself a new Panama hat. Right, So all the way from the moment he's put on the hat, you can see the trees and the leaves are rusting. You think, this is the wrong day, John. This is the wrong day to go over an aqueduct in a Panama hat. And then they'd, obviously they don't, you know, they, they know you're hooked now. So you won't find that's not going to happen. It, near the ad break, there will be a moment where there's a sudden gust and it just lifts the hat and it'll just push it back down. But you still think, there's more trouble ahead. That's not the... And then normally, just maybe the last three minutes, and it's all calm. The weather's calmed. And, and John's even mentioned how calm the weather and how blustery it was before. And then they're just about halfway across the aqueduct. And out of nowhere, the wind starts to build. And you can see... And John's getting a little bit nervous, but he's, he's also... He's steering as well. He's, it's a typical moment. He's halfway across. And, and suddenly the hat is picked up, and you're just looking there going, No! John's hat and it hovers it hovers just there there's an updraft there's an updraft but it looks like he can reach it and you can see the hand reaching out and it's almost touching the brim of the hat and then pff, it's gone and you know so that is and, and I love watching those shows so much that I have little fantasies about them and I still one of my favorite fantasies imagining one day where there'll be a beautiful moment where uh basically John Sargent He's going up the Grand Union Canal, quite near the start, maybe somewhere near Rickmansworth. What he doesn't know is Timothy West and Brunella Scales are coming 
down the Grand Union Canal. There's been a mistake in the booking for the TV narrowboat shows. And suddenly they meet at a lock and all hell breaks loose. There's just this moment where, first of all, Timothy West says, come on, John, come on, John. You full well know, you full well know we have the Grand Union on Tuesdays and Thursdays. You know that, John, you know that. And John Sargent, he's in a little bit of a kind of, you know, snarky mood. He goes, what's that, Timothy West? I don't think I can really hear you. I thought you were classically trained. Can't you project? Right, and then Timothy West, he's really right. That bloody it, right? And at the end of it, you've just got the two of them on top of a lock and they're just going at it, going at it. And Prunella Scales in the background going, that's it, Tim. Kick him in the balls. Anyway, that's the kind of, you know, fancy that I, I have about narrowboat based shows. Um, but 24 hours, oh, there's only a minute left, so I can't really tell you about that. Um, do you know what? It really is very difficult to do a gig after a large risotto. I've done this as a scientific test. And it turns out there's a control comedian coming out later on who just had a light side salad. They're doing fine. Anyway, the uh, that and doing a Friday night dinner quiz and just realising how crazy quizzes are. So I'll very quickly tell you about Should I tell them, Josie, or not? It's fine. Um, I reckon a couple of minutes, you're grand. Go for it. Oh, all right then. Um, sorry, was, uh, yeah, this is the least prepared I've ever been for a gig. <laughs> um, and uh, it was... So yeah, twenty four hours and I just, I, 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 you know, I won't tell them actually. I will just, uh, I'll, I'll tell them my favourite one. We did Sea Shambles the other week, and uh, Sea Shambles was meant to be at the Albert Hall. It was a follow up to our show uh, Space Shambles, and uh, and and Josie was was with us. And I'll, I'll just quickly one of my favourite stories when we did Space Shambles. We had an incredible lineup. We had uh, Rusty Schweikart, who's going to be on Infinite Monkey Cage in uh, the next couple of weeks. He was Apollo Nine. Um, we had uh, Helen Chersky. We had Lucy Green talking about um, solar astrophysics, and uh, we had public service broadcasting. And it was just fantastic. And it was it was filled with really. We we had lasers, these incredible sets. Seb Lee Jalal did these incredible lasers for them. And uh, and it was this brilliant celebration of just space exploration. And also uh, there was Stuart Lee. And um, I'd rung up Stuart beforehand and I just said, Stuart, just to warn you, it's, it's going to be quite a family-based show. It's quite a family-based show. So, uh, you know, just just be aware. Do what you want. I'm not trying to censor you in any way. You do what you want. But just yeah, probably be some families in. He was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, unfortunately on the night, that obviously slipped his mind. And there was half an hour of Rusty Schweikart with five and a half thousand people just so excited at the fact that they were there's an Apollo astronaut. They've already seen some incredible things. Public service broadcasting are coming up. But there is Rusty Schweikart. And he ends up playing around with some of the lasers as well, talking about having a space walk, all of this. It's beautiful. And so the legend on Rusty Schweikart, and everyone just goes, yeah, yeah, they're very, very excited. And then I said, Legend, now please welcome Stuart Lee. And Stuart Lee just walked on and he got to the mic. And he just kind of took a moment. And he looked out and he went, you know, everyone back there is just, you know. Well, oh, have you been space? Yeah, I've been space too. It's really, uh, it's really brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've, I've like been to the ISS three times. It's brilliant, right? Yeah. You know, I don't know about you, but I think astronauts are like, you know, fucking idiots. And it was one of the most amazing moments to watch. Basically, five and he, he then said that about seventeen times about what fucking idiots astronauts were, and just seeing five and a half thousand people going, you, you very much misjudged our loves. And it was a brilliant routine, by the way, as well. It was very, very funny. And I liked the way that it took people. They, they were very surprised by the whole thing. And then my son had been there as well. My son, who was 10 at the time. And uh, afterwards, we we're all gathering together in this little subterranean bar. And he comes in. I think, what an amazing evening. He's, he's seen two astronauts. He's seen uh, lasers. He's seen some incredible other things as well, talking about the traditions of the stars. Very just, you know, and he's seen public service broadcasting. And I said, hey, what was your favourite bit? And he just leapt up and he went, oh, Stuart Lee, it was brilliant. He did 17 Fs and five Bs. And every time me and Jack heard him do an F, we went, yay! And I said, and the Apollo astronauts? And he went, yeah, fine. So... That's what happens when you try and put on science communication shows, but it won't stop me. Sorry, Josie, that was all over the shop. Very strange. I can't hear you anyway. I don't know. I hope I remember to put my camera. It was lovely. It was, uh, it was fantastic. I wasn't, I was it was really weird. Running up from doing a Friday night dinner quiz. That was. I'm never doing that again. Doing that again. Very strange. Very strange. Risotto, Risotto simultaneously, simultaneously with, with the quiz. No, 
the, the well the risotto the digestion of the risotto was going on with the quiz but i was hoping the quiz was going to uh, give me an incredible burst of adrenaline that would help break down some of the fattier elements of uh, of the risotto but but they didn't so it's a, it's a warning to everyone if you if you wanted to see a public information film you know in which may be made in the 1960s where dicky henderson is about to go and play uh you know bingo hall and then has a really big risotto i was very much reenacting that Dickie Henderson, oh, by the way, a reference for all the kids out there. Robin, look who's returned. Hello. Back to bed. I've never heard more tears from the baby in a bedtime. Or me. No. Bedtime. Um, but overall, a joy. <laughs> so, thank God he was here to do his set. That was what he was planning on doing anyway. Um, now... Are you going to do a song or not to close the show, guys? Uh, yeah, we yeah, sure. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Hey! <laughs> You're up for it, Don Lowe? Hello. Hey. Um, yeah. I've been in a dark room for an hour and a half trying to get a two-year-old to stop screaming. So, <laughs> a what bit a like the comedy store. <laughs> um, Here we go. Uh, Paddy, are you all right? Oh, you know me. That's How was the I'm show say. without me? It was weird, man. I had a lovely time. I mean, I miss you. I miss you dearly. Oh, it was brilliant, Johnny. It was so... Luke, Luke turn off the camera. Turn off the camera, Luke. Turn off the camera. Um, that would be great. Uh, I was just waiting for Luke's trolling. Um, it, 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 should we finish, finish with, a little, with a little jaunty, upbeat number to celebrate the, uh, the tenth well, show? Man, he, he did a bit as some kind of dramaturg or something. I, I didn't get it, but it was, you know, like, it was, you know. You would, I'm sure you wouldn't got it earlier, and then I would have felt like I had a friend. Too highbrow for me. Um, this song is called Buckets, Buckets. and it's, and it's um, rude. <laughs> buckets of calm, buckets of calm. Where have all these buckets of calm come from? Buckets of calm. Buckets of calm. Someone must have had a really massive wave. Lovely. It's impossible to be in time. It's with impossible. It's absolutely <laughs> impossible. I'm just hearing echoes of myself and my angry neighbours and then you in one ear and that one. <laughs> oh, well, that was a lot. I, I honestly You're not think... going to sing its companion piece? Do you want to sing the other one? Yeah. One, two, three, four. Buckets of paint. Buckets of paint. To, to what do all these buckets of paint relate? Buckets of paint. Buckets of paint. Someone, Someone must be doing up, up a house or something. <laughs> Wait, it's come. Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lovely. One new one. It's a one-liner that Johnny will know the second line to if I sing the first line. Okay. Right, ready? Oh, uh, oh, oh, oh. A set on my testicles. <laughs> just just <laughs> fun. It's just cheap. <laughs> fun isn't it <laughs> I've, not heard that before. I've had honestly i think this has been the best show i've done <laughs> Tears, darkness children and friends he's come out he's come out and he's had nothing but gold <laughs> and you can't take that away from you, can you luke have you enjoyed the show this week without me oh wow, what a treat um <laughs> we've got a lot of admin oh. to do we do i'm so sorry i do apologize <laughs> I thought you were going to do it. Um, um, okay, there's a tip jar: cosmicshambles.com slash stay at home. If you want to contribute, is if you want to contribute, is shared out amongst all of us. We also each have individual coffees. If you want to buy us a coffee, we'd love it. But oh, and patrons and shit like that. But there's also a Patreon for Cosmic Shambles, which is Cosmic Shambles. Patreon.com Cosmic Shambles. And the reason that that exists is so that we can keep making all the different shows that we've been making, keep keep afloat, keep going. And Trent does a lot of hosting he does a lot of massive admin production robin does so many shows and so they want to sort of keep all of that going we do this show every week um on top of that if you buy luke a coffee he work which he should he has to invent he has to invent <laughs> i think over 400 more police squad movie <laughs> titles yeah police sequels <laughs> yes i'm up to 150 that's been I, I mean, they're all good, all your threads, but I think the Police Academy has been my personal it's favourite. No, my favourite is the dystopias. So you wrote a thousand and one dystopias. Please stop as long as you love everything. Stop me. <laughs> um, also, more admin. I am streaming my show, uh, Tender, on Sunday night this week and on Thursday night next week. Um, 
Is Robin in oh. streaming his show? Sorry? Is Robin in stream? I'm making it into a conversation. Oh, oh. 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 well, organically, I'd like to reply. Yes, he is. Um, and he'll be doing it on... <laughs> Mon- <laughs> on the internet. Um, on Wednesday. Wednesday. He did a really great, he did a ticketed one last week and he's doing part two this week because in characteristic Ince style, it expanded like the universe. Mm. Lovely. Lovely stuff. And this article right. is quite flattering. There's also <laughs> Thank you very much. You can listen to uh, Making Paddy Happy, the Johnny the Baptist uh, podcast. Making Paddy Happy, the Johnny the Baptist podcast that's on uh, five days a week, Monday to Thursday. It's free to air. And on Friday, it's only for people who've given us a coffee or uh, Patreon supporters, uh, uh, coffee in the last 30 days or any Patreon supporter. Yeah. It's a little 50 minute, 20 minute chat about mental health and surviving. And also there's some jokes. There's two jokes. I've been listening to it quite a lot. There's been two, two jokes. jokes so far and they're pretty good. Sorry. Anything for you? Look? So much I can't even go into it. Um, the, uh, I'm mainly writing dystopias and police academy films, to be honest. <laughs> uh, well, um, we should say a big thank you to our guests, Angela Barnes and Robin Itz. Oh, absolute joy. What a treat! Thank you very much. A uh, double delight. And we'll be back next week, I think. Um, this has been the show. The Friday Night Quarantine Show. Um, thank you. Yeah. At the start. Good. Sorry, probably not the time, Johnny. We're saying goodbye. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Okay. And it's been fun as ever. Paddy, it's been fun as ever. Thank Robin, you. it's been fun. This time, because we did this, this is the first time. Angie, Angela, it's the first you, time. Angela, Angie, it's been still, fun is, this is time. Still here? Trent, it's been I, fun I this time. To Johnny. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Happy birthday, birthday to you.